All right, we're back on our fourth game off Wheel of SNES. And uh, the game that uh, was drawn for us this time was Obitus, O-B-I-T-U-S, Obitus, Obitus. That's what I'm going with. How do you? How would you pronounce this, Josh? I'm going to go with Obitus because of O-B, O-B-I for Obi-Wan. So uh, Obitus is what I'm thinking it's called. Okay, okay. Well, uh, uh, regardless... Uh, uh, this game is, uh, I guess you would call it an RPG. It's definitely a different type of RPG. Uh, the background on this, uh, uh, game is, uh, you take on the role of medieval history lecturer Will Mason, who car, whose car breaks down while he's driving through Snowdonia Wells in a storm. He seeks refuge in a deserted tower only to wake up in a strange world. I did look, and Snowdonia is an actual town uh, in Wales, or an actual place. Uh, basically, to get back onto the story would be, uh, you know, the king. Uh, so you, this guy wakes up, he's in a tower. Uh, the lore behind it is this king gave his four sons these uh, four orbs. Uh, I guess they're uh, orbs or stones of tranquility uh, to symboli symbolize their unity. And uh, they're separated into four sections on the map. And uh, so the basic scope of the game is, you know, you're going into these sections. Uh, you're looking for your stones of tranquility and a key. And they will unlock another door that is in your, uh, where you start in the tower. And so once you do that, each section, it opens up a new section, etc., etc. Uh, gameplay goes from there. Uh... What do you think about the the story of this, Josh? I mean, this was a, I will say this is a classic Super Nintendo game where a lot of the story was either on the back of the box or in the instruction manual because it didn't really give you a uh, much backstory once you started the game. <clears throat> yeah, no, you uh, like I said, you started off in a tower after you hit the start button. So, yeah, the story, like I said, what you read, I mean, it seems kind of interesting. I didn't know that the place was an actual place. So that's kind of cool. One thing that was strange about this was uh, it was kind of like, uh, uh, I guess before I uh, get into this some more, this game was actually an Amiga game as well, which is the second one we played in a row. Super Putty that we we uh, played in last episode was an Amiga game. Uh, so that is what this game was uh, released on Amiga, the Atari ST, and DOS, or DOS. Uh, so it was ported into the Super Nintendo in like 1991. So this was super early in on the Super Nintendo. Uh, it was brought in by, when it was uh, ported over, it was Bulletproof Software, which uh, Bulletproof Software, that sounds familiar. I couldn't figure out where I'd uh, you know heard of them from. And uh, they have did several. I mean, when I say several, it's probably like 10 Tetris games, which I'm a big Tetris guy. Uh, they did Wordtress. Uh, they did Yoshi's Cookie and uh, classic Twisted Tales of Spock McFang. So, uh, uh, with all that being said, Bulletproof brought this in here. They had, you know, some uh, relative success with some games later in the uh, life of the Super Nintendo. But the one of the things when you get into the game is it's an RPG, but it's not like a Final Fantasy. It wasn't even like Dragon View. It is... Uh, it reminded me of like the text version uh, DOS games uh, back in the late 80s, like uh, where it brought you up to a screen and you had to say, hey, open door, turn left. It was just one step up from that to me was what it was like. Uh, it was very simple, but it wasn't necessarily bad, I don't think. Uh, the display, when you, you turned it on, they had a... a your item on the bottom right, you had a map that you could navigate with, and then you had two candles on the left that was one for stamina and one for health. So uh, that was kind of different. Everything's right there in front of you. Uh, and then once again, you just navigate through this map that you don't really necessarily get a map in the game. You have to, I guess, either wander along somewhat aimlessly or you make your own map as you go. Which is what I've done. I actually started out and I had a sheet of paper there after the first 10 minutes of me running around not achieving much or forgetting where I've gone and coming across the bones that have fallen enemies. I'm like, okay, restart, 
And because, I mean, you didn't lose much progress whenever you restarted once you're that early. So I actually did. I had a piece of paper that I draw and I made a full map of the first area that I was in. So one thing, too, is uh, uh, the maps are pretty simple, but there's a lot. There's a lot of, you know, pathways you can go down. Uh, one thing I did, it's very easy to get turned around and backtrack without knowing yeah. what you're doing. Uh, because as where it, it did remind me a lot like when you're playing Wolfenstein, except you didn't have this the strafe. It's like you either went straight or it was turned and uh, 180 great degrees or back 180 degrees. Uh, there it wasn't really pushing back to go backwards. You had to turn around uh, full 360 and go backwards. Uh, but I did when the enemies when you would fight them and and you had basic stuff you know stuff you'd pick up actually it was a lot of inventory uh for what i thought the game was gonna have uh but you also pick up basic weapons like knives and bows and arrows and all that stuff i think bow and arrow was the thing i used the most it was the easiest and then you would find the bones of uh the people you had killed before that was kind of like a landmark and i think that's probably something that they did on purpose to help you navigate this map yeah, they, you had to, because if the bones would have disappeared at any given time, you, you would just be going around in a big circle unless you actually documented the map and the process of which way you moved. And you had pretty basic enemies. You had basically it looked like jungle guys wearing a loincloth that was either trying to punch you. Uh, uh, you had guys, some archers. There was like some kind of panther. Uh, and then there was like some knots and stuff like that that you would talk to along the way. Uh, I mean, it, to be honest, uh, you know, graphically, uh, with it being early on, with this being an Amiga game, uh, and it being the start of the Super Nintendo, I mean, I thought it was actually pretty, I mean, it, it was ambitious, it was definitely original, but, uh, it wasn't, I don't know the, really the correct word, uh, if, if you would have played this as soon as it came out, I feel like it would have uh really resonate like you'd be like whoa this is what the super nintendo is all about right here it, it would have been the game changer for, yeah yeah i mean now for the new consoles at the time there was a lot of uh games that came out at launch and and in 91 that was you know probably more iconic and better graphically and gameplay wise but uh this one was uh you know pretty unique in the way it goes i could see in 1991 you know just being enthralled in this game yeah, yeah, I could see that too. And another, I got a feeling that this one here is going to be another one of those cult following games that people will automatically love, no matter what. Well, uh, you know, and, and so once, once I did look at a few things here, I, I didn't beat this game. Uh, I didn't necessarily not enjoy it. There were some things that I didn't like. That really wasn't the game's fault itself. I don't think. But uh, it was definitely strange, and, and and there was areas where you would get to a castle, and it would uh, be side scrolling. <laughs> when I've seen the first side scrolling uh, screen, I actually was thinking, "Wow, here's Dragon View." It had uh, kind of a similar aspect. I think Dragon View probably was way better on the side scroller than uh, what this one was. But uh, there was a little bit of everything in this game. Uh, uh, you know, it's definitely. I feel like this is for a niche crowd right here. Uh, I, you said cult following. I feel like you really love this game. I feel like you could put hours and hours in this game, uh, which I think the total playthrough would probably be about two to three hours on this. Uh, I could see how you would either be enthralled in this game or you would turn it off in the first five minutes and be done with it. Yeah, and that goes back to the whole point of, you know, renting video games from the uh, grocery store or something like that, like, if you got it, you couldn't just take it back. You you played it until you beat it or until the next day. So, and just only having that max three to four hours of gameplay left in it, depending on how you played it, uh, I could see this game being enjoyable for people whenever it first came out. And I, I enjoyed it to a point. It wasn't the greatest uh, side scroller or RPG style game <clears throat> that I remember playing for the Super Nintendo, but overall it wasn't bad. I said I enjoyed it. 
I had a few things that I did that I disliked about it. Well, I'll say I do grade this one on a curve a little bit because this is our second Amiga game, and and so I don't have a whole lot of experience with Amiga, and I have zero with the Atari S ST. You know, I grew up with some of the DOS stuff, and knowing that this game was originally released to DOS and then ported into the Super Nintendo, I feel like. If you said, hey, this is just a straight-up Super Nintendo game, it's easy to pick out some of its flaws. But if I told you that this was a MS-DOS game, you would probably say, man, this was probably pretty cool back in the day on MS-DOS. So, yeah, I, I agree with that. So while uh, you know, I would get, venture to say that this game was already created probably for the Super Nintendo, or it was well in de development for the Super Nintendo as released. So I don't think this was the intended... Uh, uh, yeah, the intended target. I think it did well with it. I don't think it would have really mattered uh, if it came out after the Super Nintendo was released. But I think it did... Uh, I, I do grade it on a little bit of a curve because I feel like there's some old technology in here and that's not always bad. But uh, I guess that's really all I got in the, the build-up of this game, Josh. Uh, uh, do you have anything you want to add or you want to take it to the make it and break it section? I thought we just go ahead and jump to the make it and break it section. So I'm going to start out, i say we start out on a make it note. Okay. Uh, you know, so like I say, the game is definitely original. I, I like that. And I grew up playing some really crappy MS-DOS mm. games. And, and this one's not far from that, but uh, it did kind of hit the nostalgia part. Like, as soon as I seen the first screen, uh, like the first screen of gameplay, I was like, Oh man, this is like a game I've played uh, before. Some I knew I'd never played this game before. I've never heard of the game before, uh, much less could I told you it was an RPG or anything like that. But when I seen it, it was like, man, this it would it reminded me like some of the old school like floppy disk games. Uh, one thing I did like about it uh, is uh, on top of it having a little bit of nostalgia, is it had a little bit different mechanism. I, I did kind of like having the two candles down in the corner that was uh, the aspect, the, the heads-up display, I guess, is really what I would say was kind of cool. Uh, I thought the you had a little bubble. I, I called it my map. I guess it was technically a compass. But uh, then you had your two candles down there. Everything was pretty easy to read. Some of these uh, levels you were going through, there would be like five and six different routes you could take. And I feel like between the, the compass, it was very easy to tell that there was other routes. Like, it didn't make the game any easier, but it kind of helped you map your area out easier. And I do like the candles. Even though I didn't necessarily know what stamina was uh, in relation to the game, I did like having a health candle. It kind of reminded me of like Diablo where you have your, you know, your health looks like a red potion on one side of the screen and the blue is your mana or your magic. It kind of reminded me of that. So actually getting to see yourself get hit and watch your candle burn lower was kind of cool to me, I thought. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> as far as I, uh, some of the make it stuff for me is, like I said, it seemed like it was a really original idea. It was a really cool concept. I did like the whole sort of text style adventure set up to it. And uh, the health and stamina, well, that, that was a pretty cool trick, for, especially for early on. So you didn't really see that much in that. Uh, I did figure out the stamina a lot quicker because I found out that if you don't sleep, you start the game over. Yes, uh, that is one thing, uh, is uh, the stamina. I didn't have an instruction book to read. I just kind of jumped in on it, didn't really know what it was. Uh and, and and one thing I did like too is the I guess what this goes one and two right here is once you got into the menu, uh, one thing that was great about this game was it had a save state to it. Like uh, even though it was only one slot you could save, so if your brother, sister, or friend came over and saved over top of it, you were screwed. But you could actually save this game at any time, which was good. I mean, it could be bad at times once we get to the break it part. Uh, but one thing that was cool is when you literally you would hit select, I believe it was, or maybe it was start, then select. It pulled up a menu. You could save the game at any time, which, once again, is a good thing and bad thing if you know what you're doing. Uh, then there was sleep. And I'm like, why in the heck would I ever sleep? I didn't understand it until I run out of stamina. And when you run out of stamina, I mean, you just instantly die. Like, you're in the middle of walking and you just 
fall into a full pile. health yes. and everything. You, you're done. Once your stamina is all the way down, it starts bleeding from your health candle, which once again was kind of a cool aspect. Didn't really go into a whole lot of detail of telling that uh, story while you were playing the game. So that was a little frustrating the first time I seen it, but I did like that you could save the game. I did like the menu when you get, went into that save game. You could quit, save, sleep, uh all of that yeah it was super easy to get to uh the menu had only pertinent information and it was easy to use and so i I did enjoy that a lot i did too also speaking of the inventory i love the inventory system in this like there was like you pick up whatever you wanted and you always had like i mean it was always there you didn't necessarily have to drop anything or use it to hold more. Like, I don't think I've ever once ran out inventory space. I just, and I, I, I'm a hoarder when it comes to video games. I collect everything. If I can pick it up, I can collect it. And that was really bad for me in newer games, especially like Cyberpunk and Elden Ring. Dude, if I come across like a flower in Elden Ring, doesn't matter if I have 700 of them, I'm picking the down flower. And it's, it's a, it, it kills me as a person because I know I'll never use it. But it's being added to the inventory. Now, one thing I didn't really get into is with the inventory. If you it was you could side scroll through the inventory on your main screen, or you could go into the menu to your inventory, and it was pretty detailed, to even to like the weight of what your bow and arrow weighed, or the gold brick, or the apple that you picked up. And I'm sure. I don't know, it may be too early for that, but that may have had something to play with how quick your stamina went out. If not, it was still kind of cool. I mean, I I felt like it meant something when it was telling me the weight of what a stone weighed, or what it weighed, or how much that apple weighed. But I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention. I felt like I was kind of missing out. I didn't know if that went hand-in-hand hand with stamina. And one thing that you said was this was like a textile RPG without the text. Yeah. And uh, th- with that being said... It was just like, is to me it was almost like instead of uh, side scrolling, it was almost like tunnel running. You know, it's like you had to go through, and and each one of these maps would have like when you get to the end, it, a lot of them would have an intersection. It was kind of like a cul-de-sac, and sometimes you would have to run all the way down to turn around and come back. So if somebody was punching in the back, you know, depending on if you got stopped by uh another enemy or they had witches and knots uh some of these things you would either have to fight the guys to get down to turn around it, it was just strange it, it wasn't necessarily bad but it was just like and sometimes you're just like why can't i just turn around and sometimes you would have to go down to one of these little makeshift cul-de-sacs to turn around and then sometimes the enemy wasn't there and sometimes it was but it was exactly it's i guess it's kind of hard to Explain that it was like a textile RPG, but without the text. But, I mean, that's really about the best way I could explain it. And I did think that was kind of cool. Oh, yeah. I, like I said, that I think that was one of the coolest aspects of it is that whole thing. Yeah. Now, the running down, like as you're getting punched in the back or shot by an arrow or whatever, and you're having to run all the way down and spin around a little cul-de-sac area just to fight. Uh, that was a little annoying, but like you said, I mean, you don't really expect much from it at that point in time. And I agree with you on the weights and everything. Like, that was a really cool aspect that was added on, especially into early games, like into uh, uh, the SNES and everything like that. Because I know, in, you know, in later games, that stuff affects you. It ends up uh, encumbering you and everything like that. It slows you down, consumes more stamina. But I don't... I, I I collected everything, and I didn't really notice an increase in in my stamina going down. So I just think it was a cool little feature. That was me, and you may be a hundred percent right because I think that's probably a little early when we're talking about a, a DOS game uh, factoring that in. But I think like if you were playing a game like a Witcher or something like that, uh, maybe an Elden Ring, that that would slow your character down a lot. Uh, another thing that I did like with this game it was it was a pretty long game. It's kind of funny that out of the four games that we've played, that uh, two of them have been games that would be, you know, in excess of three or four hour playtime. I mean, we played Dragon View. I think it was like an eight to ten hour game. Uh, so I guess 
to me, I wouldn't necessarily even consider this an RPG, like a true RPG to me, but I do know it falls in that realm, and there's some, you know, purest of Super Nintendo RPG games. Uh, to me, it was, if you call an RPG game, it was definitely different, but it was a long game, so if you had, and I don't think that it was necessarily overpowered or underpowered, I, I felt like the enemies were probably, for the most part, uh, if you it was more about solving the puzzle and getting the correct item to the correct place than it was, oh, let me learn how to fight this guy. It, I don't think fighting was necessarily the main point they wanted to put into this game. Uh, no, it, like said, it was a puzzle RPG. I know what it reminds me of. It was like an early uh, Super Nintendo version of like a mist, just in his medieval. Yeah. That's what it reminded me a lot of now yeah. that I think about it. Uh, but at the same time, there was a lot of content. There was a lot of realms to explore. You know, I'm not a big guy wanting to double back. There were several times you had to double back through a realm or whatever. And uh, and it was kind of cool that once you got one of these stones of tranquility, you go back to the tower, you're able to open a door, and then you could go into the next realm. And I did think they did a good job, too, of spreading like, you know, hey, you're in the cave system. You felt like you were in a cave. Hey, you're out in the jungle. Hey, you know, everything, you hear trees and that annoying as hell owl hooting around <laughs> uh, every three seconds. Uh, so for a game that was an MS-DOS and Amiga and an Atari ST, uh, I did like that there was content there. If, if you like this game, if this was the jam that you had, you would be like, oh, yeah, man, this was perfect. Give me more, you know. Yeah, and on another positive note is, I actually enjoyed the sounds. Like I said, it made you feel like if you were in the cave, you heard the drip of the water coming off of the stalactites or stalagmites, whichever one's which. Uh, like I said, in the forest, you could hear the owl hoot. You know, you could hear water run if you're close to a, a little river or a brook or something like that. So I did like that the sounds, the sound effects were very in tune with it, and it wasn't a generic, you know, like, like repeating over and over and over again. I, well, I, I have to disagree. I'm going to bring that into the break it section as we get in. I wasn't as high. On, I, I do say the sounds were uh, uh, correct for where you were at, but uh, uh, we'll get more into that later. For <laughs> on my side, I'll get into that. Uh, I'll tell you what I think. I've got two more things I really liked about the game. Or well, one thing I that's my favorite thing about it and then one that is really uh uh more i guess of a question to you one thing i did like that i think made this game better you know my favorite part was i feel like you took a one player game and you could make it fun for multiple people to play i could see being a young kid playing this game and having like your brother or your friend or your parents out here drawing a map i mean it would still be fun to draw the map because uh uh, I mean, there was a lot of uh, options, a lot of roads. And, and I'll say that uh, it, it's kind of funny because if you actually get online, you can find maps in a single JPEG to this game. But when you're in it, it seems way bigger than it actually is. So I could imagine if you'd rented this game on like a, a Friday night and you kept it for two days, that you would be sitting here drawing out maps with, you know, and I heard you even say that you were drawing maps. I guess kind of was wandering aimlessly, but like if you really were in that game and you wanted to beat it and get the most out of it, I think you could literally map this out pretty easy uh, and get a sense of accomplishment. That was one thing I thought was cool. I could see my brother saying, hey, it's my turn to play and me not arguing. Or if he says, hey, can I play a little longer? I'd be like, yeah, that's fine. I can draw the map out for us. Uh, I felt like it was, you know, kind of like, a, a, it, it, it was, it would, encompass many people one person could play it but i feel like you could entertain two or three people uh with that and that's one thing i thought was really cool about this game yeah uh you could trade uh trade out in the different realms that you go to yeah and like i said one person can do one round while the other person tracks the map creates it as they go next turn switch i just feel like on a game like mario uh or a lot of games you just watch another person you're like hey i'm just waiting on him to finish hope he does good hope he dies so i can play and this one, I feel like you could sit there on the couch 
with the pad of paper, drawing it out, and feel like you're actually contributing to the game as much as the person, if not even a little more, from the, uh, the guy holding the controller. Uh, now, one thing I don't know, I don't know if you could actually map out where the enemies are. I don't know if they randomly spawn. Uh, it kind of felt like they probably did, because if you stayed in one section too long, like if you were actually bent and paused the menu, I feel like you would get attacked. So I don't think they spawned in the same spot every time. But, uh... I just thought it was kind of cool. You could actually map this out. I could see, you know, sitting at home on a Friday night, staying up to 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, yelling at my cousin because he took a left instead of a right, and then we're in a stuck spot. But Yeah, uh, like I said, the whole value of having a person playing the role of a cartographer would actually come into it at that point. I do feel like, and the, and the last thing that I've got for it is... Uh, I feel like the people who like this game, uh, I did mark it down when I was playing it, is like, there's a lot that's geared against you in this game, which is, I, I put a lot of this in the break it section, but if you're one of those guys that want a game that kicks your ass, this game will do it. It doesn't necessarily do it with, you know, overpowered enemies or not, but I feel like if you were into the Dark Souls, the Skyrim, the Elden Ring now, and you were warped back to 91 when this game came out, that you would be, I mean, I feel like you had to be a glutton for punishment in this game, because there was sometimes, like, you could make a mistake that caused you to restart a game. It wasn't like, uh, hey, I saved my game, I can restart from there. Uh, there was uh, options that you could take, uh, whether you meant to or not, that could literally break the game to where you could not win. And so to me, I'm like, that was aggravating me because I'm not a Dark Souls guy. I'm not an Elden Ring guy. I'm not one of these guys that d does that type of game. But if you got your jollies off on that, you would probably love this game a lot. See, and I am that guy. I love my Dark Souls, my Elden Rings, all that stuff. So I was fine with all that because it made you think. And that's one of my biggest things about video games now is I love a get good game where... Like, you, you actually have to adapt to the game itself to become better at it. I feel like you could play this game, and even though you spend two or three hours to beat it, that you could get 45 minutes in and realize you did something completely incorrect that you cannot reverse. And since there's only one save spot, you've already saved over top, and you're like, oh, well, here we go again. Yep. And that's probably where the map system, if you drew one out, would come into play. But that this game wasn't necessarily that type of uh, punishment. It's not particularly what I like, but I do know that the folks out there such as Josh and the other Skyrim and uh, Dark Souls and these players, uh, this game would be very appealing to them. Uh, for me, that's all I've got that really makes this game great, Josh. Do you have anything you want to add or you want to move on into the the break it section? Oh, the only thing I have left is the versatility of the weapons. Like, I liked having the bow... The finding them laying around the knives, uh, well, they weren't. You did find swords later on that you could use, but a lot of it was throwing objects, like the little dagger you find. You just chuck that nonstop, and I did notice that it does different damage to the enemies. The dagger didn't do shit to the knife that you had to fight, but the bow did. Well, I'd say a lot of the throwing came in too. Is you'd be like, why do you have a knife and you're not stabbing? If you watch the guy that actually punched you, kind of the jungle guy that punches you. The he punching, throws his fist. Yes, it wasn't, the animation wasn't great. And I think with them going with the throwing objects was better than... Uh, it was. So I, I do uh, think that that was why they went in that direction. I will say that you did get satisfaction because there was a lot of stuff to find. Whether it be a ring or... An apple, yeah. an ingot something now i did to me i've got that fomo so i would get to an area and i ain't found nothing in a minute and i'd just be spinning around in circles because i feel like i'm missing something that's important <laughs> and so that part just absolutely drove me crazy uh because like say you would get so much stuff that you could actually find and then next thing you know you're it's on like, a dry spell yeah 20 20 minutes of a dry spell and i'm like oh, i feel like i'm doing something wrong or i'm missing something uh, but yeah, there, it was kind of plentiful. It felt like you were at least progressing through the game as you found this stuff. Yeah, so, I, I agree with that. So, uh, if that's all you got, we're going to bring it over on over into the break it section, Josh. All right. I'll go ahead and tell you my number one thing 
that I've noticed right off the bat. Now, and I'm playing this uh, these games in on modern TVs. Uh, one thing I did notice was it wasn't full screen. It was like three quarters screen. It, I play mine on an emulator on my computer, and it was full screen for me. Well, so on, on mine, it literally was three quarters screen. Now I had uh, my TV. I think it's like sixty inches, uh, fifty eight inches, something like that. That's probably way too big for a game like this to be on. But it, it didn't necessarily. It wasn't like it was graphically unacceptable. Uh, I just it, that's the first thing. It was like, man, I can't even get a full screen out of this. I and, and it wasn't that big a deal, but. It I makes you wonder, back like back, back in the day, like a seventeen inch TV, the game on when as a it had, kid, it that was be, a big TV. It had to be a full screen at that point. I right? think I think when my first TVs that we gamed on was thirteen inches. So if you're telling me it's a thirteen inch TV and it's actually shrunk down like that, I don't want to play a nine inch game. You know, I want all thirteen yeah. of those inches. Yeah, no. See, do I, not take that out of context. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was just going to keep going, but no. Uh, I said my my whole thing was is that my my PC screen that I use is 19 inches, and I said it was full screen on that emulator. But I don't know if it was just the emulator that ran it full screen and it expanded it and everything. Or I said playing this back in the day, if you had an old old TV, you know, I wonder if it would be full screen on on the actual game because you're playing it on the SNES Mini, right? So I'm curious in that. Uh, it it played like say three quarter screen. Uh, to go into the next part that that may have been part of the mini. Uh, I feel like this was just the game of it being this old. Uh, it, I'm not gonna say it was like super pixelated, but you know, once again, I'm playing on a, a most a sixty inch uh, regular TV. I didn't hook it up to the Trinitron, but it, even though I thought it looked fine when you weren't moving. Uh, while I was moving, you know, I don't know about you, but as I was going through, I wasn't even really worried that much with the enemies because once they hit you, I mean, you know, you're going to take damage because some of these enemies just kind of jump up. Yeah, they appear out of nowhere, and the only way you know they're there is it whenever your screen flashes. Yeah, right? when you get hit, your screen flashes red, so you're like, oh, can I turn around and kill this enemy? Do I have to run down to the end of the road and turn around and come back? Uh, but while I'm sitting here trying to look for enemies, trying to look for stuff that I'm, uh, you know, knobs, arrows, rings, keys, keys. That's the big one is the keys as I'm watching my map. And I was like, man, my eyes are hurting watching like, because everything's scrolling. You're, you're pushing up, you're pushing up. You're trying to move to the next screen while you're watching the map. And it may be just me being an old man. Now, uh, it wasn't like I necessarily got motion sick, but sickness, but it was like one step before that. So it's like I'm literally looking at one screen, one part of the screen of that map, and then everything else is kind of scrolling by. And for me, I did not like that at all. No, I, I will agree with you on that. I didn't. And also with mine, as I was moving, like I don't know if it was modern day or anything like that. I'm just curious as in to like whenever mine was moving, it seemed a little blurry as I was moving a little bit. It didn't really stay in full focus the entire time. So... That made me wonder if it could have been my PC setup. Maybe I was running too high of a frame rate or... Mine wasn't necessarily blurry, but there was something going on there. Because I did have to, uh, like, literally after I played it for the first two hours, I had to go take some ibuprofen. Now, we're in full disclosure. We're in Tennessee and full-on uh, uh, pollen and all the allergy season kicking and I don't typically get them as Josh is miserable with them. I could have just been a little under the weather as I played this game, but I felt like, uh, the, the visual part, like say, you know, maybe if I was playing on a 13 inch CRT monitor in a computer lab in a middle school, this game wouldn't have been as bad on my eyes, but I did feel like it, it gave me, I felt almost physically ill uh, from playing it. Yeah, like, and you mentioned the whole pollen thing. I mean, that's what's wrong with me now. <laughs> and I feel miserable. But I, I said, I, it may have been that with the whole blurriness or anything. So I don't know. But to me, I just, it just felt like it wasn't, like, I think if we played it back on an older TV, true to the system itself, 
I think it would have worked a little bit better. I don't think we would have probably got that feeling from it, but I said it got blurry for me, and I even wear glasses, and it started giving me a little headache. I, I, I hate it that even though I think this game is cool in its own right, that I even got to the gameplay, and I'm still beating up on it. Like this is just like before I. I guess scrolling through goes in with the gameplay, but another thing I didn't like about it is I didn't like the sounds and I didn't like the music. Uh, now, once again, you know, this might be a product of what the game is. You know, you were talking about liking the uh, cave drips. The cave drips were okay. That damn owl in the woods was pissing me off. The owl was annoying. I give you that. And it was just, hoo-hoo, 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 over and over. And it, and it probably isn't so bad. If you, but once again, I wasn't drawing a map out, and I feel like even if you were drawing a map out the first time you did that, it still sucked. But uh, you know, the music wasn't nothing to write home when there was music scenes. Uh, uh, the sound effects, while they were good, they were literally on a three second repeat. And this game, uh, it's just it's geared to exploration. So as I'm mindlessly wandering through these caves and the castles and all of this, I'm hearing the same sound effects over and over and over. So, uh, it, and, and I guess it goes into play too, is there wasn't really, there was no map to be found. You did your own map. Yeah. I never found a map anyway. I never found a map. And like I said, I, I brought out the uh, cartographer skills to be able to create my own map as I played. So, so I'm just like, you know, in a game that, I'm, that I'm going to wander around in, uh, I mean, even like Dragon View on one that was supposed to be a, a wandering game. I thought the music, it wasn't bad. I mean, it wasn't my favorite thing, but it wasn't necessarily as, the sound effects I probably hated more than the music, but this game was kind of one of those stumble through where you map it out, play it how you want, but I did feel like the sound got old pretty quick. Uh, I could see that, like I said. With, if you weren't mapping your own thing, yeah, those sound effects would drive you absolutely crazy because it's constantly mindless wandering. But where I mapped it, I was, I think I was in each realm, maybe a total of 15 minutes after I mapped it out. So I could just go in and out. I knew where I needed to go to get something and back out. So the sound effects didn't really drive me crazy. The, the owl did because I said that that's the first thing, first realm you go to. And he was a little bit of annoying. And I wish I could have found him and shot him with an arrow. <laughs> that that would have been... That would have been... I would have explored way more to find that damn owl if I could kill him and shut him up. Uh, another thing that I didn't like was the, the cycling of items. Even though I know you said that you liked the inventory system. And once you actually like went into the menu to the inventory system uh, to look at what you had, it was cool. But like there were several times like where I would just pick up an apple i didn't i guess really uh uh i didn't like the way there was they used all the buttons there was a pick up and a drop button so every time you pick something up it was like it automatically put it in your go-to inventory slot so it, it, yeah it went to your number one inventory which was annoying so when uh the dude comes out and there's like a panther attack and you and you're like, hey, let me shoot it. Why am I not shooting? It's like, oh, I picked up a ring. That's cool. So then you were scrolling through. While well, trying not to die. Yes. And once you scrolled all the way through, what normally happens when you get to the end of a list and you hit the, and you scrolled with the bumper buttons, which was fine. But once you get to the end, you normally hit that bumper button one more time and it brings you to the start of your inventory. Yep. This did not. So if you missed yep. your bow and arrow, you had to scroll all the way back through. And that was a huge turnoff on this game. It was, I made it a habit to every time I picked something up before I encountered an enemy, I would go in to the actual pause menu, go to inventory, and select my bow or dagger. Uh, you had to do that because, I mean, if you didn't have your mind on, hey, every time, uh, every screen I could get attacked if I don't have my bow and arrow ready, you know, it's just unnecessary damage. Uh, I, I wasn't a big fan of that. I wasn't a big fan of the... Uh, drop items which it did come in later uh i guess i guess we'll go ahead and uh tackle that i thought the people you needed to talk to in the game it sucked trying to talk to them uh so what happened to me was when i would come up to somebody that was punching me i'd hit a button and then i'm trying to it'll show me the strength of this warrior yeah. or whatever 
Okay, that's fine. So then I would come up and there would be like a knot in the road. Now, this guy's not like punching me or nothing. He's standing there. He's going to protect you while you sleep. So I'm like, what in the hell is this guy doing? Let me talk to him. So I didn't necessarily, and this is probably partial my fault, I didn't know necessarily how to talk to him. So the next thing I know is I, I attack him. Now we're fighting. Now I kill him. <laughs> so is there a part, like, that? sometimes there was information, which we'll get to this, uh, that was important that I would never know. I would never know what the text is because I killed this knot. Uh, you can't I sleep in the forest on. anymore. Uh, there wasn't uh, any item that he dropped for me. It was just like, oh, crap. I accidentally killed this guy. And and I didn't like that. Uh, uh, at any time, I think you could kill any person in here. Oh, yeah. NPCs weren't safe. Yeah. And, and that was, I guess, probably kind of cool back in the day. But it was like, man, I just want to talk to these people. And uh, and, and that comes back into uh, one of the main things I absolutely hate about this game. Well, But it was just like, you know, most of the people that you, your, your NPCs, you could, they're, even if you can attack them, they attack you back. You like run out of the screen or run out of the frame and then come back. But uh, yeah, it just, you were like, man, I hope this, this witch or this knight or this dwarf Respawns. doesn't have anything important that I need to make through the game because he didn't leave nothing for me. And while I was trying to talk to him, I accidentally punched him or whatnot. Yeah. Or actually, if you got somebody that was attacking you while you were trying to talk to them, that you would ha- you couldn't back up, so you would have to proceed. You were stuck. Yes, you were stuck, and you would have to kill him. So that part, uh, that was a pretty major flaw for me, I felt like. Yeah, but again, that that brings it back to the whole Dark Souls thing. That's exactly when I. That's exactly why I'm like, this is like what Dark Souls must have been based off of this crappy game, you know? Because Dark Souls, you can kill everybody. You can kill every single NPC if you want. Now it makes the game almost unplayable, but you could theoretically kill every single NPC. So. uh that that part was pretty frustrating, and it was just because if well we'll get into that here here in a minute because that that is my <laughs> one of my major flaws in this game. Uh, so you know the game was was what it was uh, as you were walking through there it was all cool and then all of a sudden you get to a castle and it goes side scrolling and it's like what in the hell has just happened right here? It was like I can tell you if I would have showed you the first ten minutes of this game and then the castle. You would never imagine that this is the same game. And and the first thing I thought of was Dragon View, except Dragon View had a really shitty world map. And then they had, uh, I thought, a decent side it scrolling. Wasn't, it wasn't bad. It was all right. This was a pretty crappy uh, normal map and an even worse side scroller to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because there was no depth to the side scrolling. This was a generic side scrolling with minimal things you could do and interact with. The the first time I walked by one of the knots, I'm like, oh, well, I've, I've fought some of these guys before, but uh, uh, this guy just looks like a statue. And you could try to shoot him, it's cool, and then you walk by him, and then a, a sword falls and hits you and does damage. It's like, what in the hell is that? And then you shoot him and you kill him. Uh, you, you have to take damage first before you could actually hit him, which was stupid. Yeah, and uh, was not a fan. I felt like when you look at the, uh, if you play this game for five minutes and you're like, I cannot uh, understand why somebody would play this. Uh, like, if you couldn't get with the the style of game it was in the first five minutes, you could power through. And I'd be like, okay, well, I, I understand it's not for everybody. But if you got to the side scroller and you're like, I'm done at that point, I completely understand. Like, there is no, and to me, there was no defense of the side scrolling aspect of it. Uh, now, once again, when you look at it as a Super Nintendo game, it was pretty bad. And when you look at it as an MS DOS game, it, it was, was pretty prob- good. It was probably like a lot of other crappy MS DOS games. Uh, but to me, the side scrolling, I, I was, it led to my ultimate downfall of this game. Uh, just to go into the main glaring part of this, I absolutely, absolutely hated. I I could see that it, it it was pretty bad. It was I mean pretty bad is an understatement. It was absolutely atrocious to me on that side scrolling. But besides that, I said I mean 
whenever you first turn into it, it, you're like, okay, this is a little weird. This is off. And like you said, you would never know it was the same game at that point. Well, and, and another thing, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, another thing I didn't like was the game is very slow moving through the story. Now, I do appreciate there's text boxes that pop up when you're going to a new area that kind of tells you a little bit about it. And if you can manage how to talk to somebody and not attack them. Uh, you got information. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, but it's very slow moving and I'm like, I like my RPGs where you're farming experience or materials. Mm -hmm. I don't mind it being slow moving as long as there's the action of you attacking people. And, and this one was just a different type of slow moving through it. It like, it, it just wasn't for me the, uh, the pace of the game. Now, I guess if you had to map and you, you were trying to speed run this, which I did go to speed run and I did not show that anybody had completed this game or there was no, uh, posting of it. Uh, maybe it's not as bad, but I just felt like with the exploration and all that, it just, it was a little too slow moving for me, but that's, you know, subjective. That's just me. And that might not be for everybody. Uh, and another thing that I've seen was at the end of all this, uh, now, I didn't beat this game, so I've, I've had to go, you know, do my research. Uh, there was no final boss in this game. There wasn't. So, at the end of the game, I mean, not, and I, I don't necessarily know if I consider that completely bad, because I think if you powered through all of this, you were, you're probably ready to be done with it. I would. If I put five hours in this game, I would be, I, I don't think I'd really want to find the final boss. Well, like I said, it, it's like a mist. Mm -hmm. And to my knowledge, there's no final boss in Mist either, is there? It's just all, it's all exploration, puzzles, and everything like that. So, you know, when you say that, you, this is like the guy who came up, the, the studio that came up with Dark Souls had met like the cousin of the guy who made Mist. And they made a game way before that, you know. It, it was, yeah. It was very. That would be it. it was, it, and you're right. Uh, I do feel like the this game was probably more puzzle based than it was like, hey, let me fight. Uh, but it was just, I, I can't go any farther. I got to tell you what, I, this broke this damn game for me. <laughs> this game is, and and this might not be so bad for everybody else. All you Dark Soul guys. And girls out there, uh, this game, the biggest turnoff, what made this game the worst thing for me, is it will let you screw yourself. Like, you without knowing, you can inadvertently screw yourself to where you cannot beat this game. And you would never know it. Uh, now, I know Josh, and I believe it's Final Fantasy fourteen, was it? Or 12, 12? Which one of the Final Fantasy games was it that you got so upset with? Oh, God. Uh... I guess I guess it's it uh, was ten. It was the one where you made certain choices in it and you couldn't beat the final boss. The dude would one shot you every single time, wipe your entire party. That's exactly. I know we've talked in uh, you know in detail of how bad you hate that game. How that game you could. You would never it's, the only it. it's the only game I've ever literally broke. I took the disc out and shattered the game. Once I'm like, okay, fine. Then. My team's not strong enough. So I went back and I started one shot in Giants. I'm like, cool. I can take this dude now. He goes up and boom, one shot. And then I finally looked it up and it's like, oh, if you didn't build your team exactly like this, then this game is unbeatable. That's exactly how this game treated me. And now I, I'm not above saying if you do this out of order... Or obviously, if you don't get all the items that you need, the key items, the quest items, that you, uh, it's not going to be tougher. But there's literally, you cannot beat this game if you do certain things. Uh, so I, after like the first hour, it's like, I'm getting nowhere. I don't know what to do. So I had to look up a guide. And hey, do you remember the, the little gnome in the woods? Or the, I guess as a dwarf, that I tried to talk to and I accidentally killed? Oh, yeah. Well, he had the key that I needed. And you know what? I was wandering around for a damn hour trying to find keys and damn stones of tranquility. And I'm like, oh, so I got to start the game over now. Yep. So then I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to like read through this walkthrough as I play this because I obviously suck at this game. Uh, I, I got my keys, got my uh, stone of tranquility, uh, 
well, I got into the castle, I guess I should say. And uh, that's where I hit another part that I didn't like. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, I'm sure you probably did, is you can't sleep in the castle. Nope, you sure can't. So, Which would be the safest place for you to sleep. You would think. So, uh, you know, who cares about sleeping in a castle? Other than your stamina goes down like crazy uh, quick while you're there. So, hey, even though you only got one save slot and you keep saving because you don't know what's behind each corner, safe next thing scumming. you know, you're all the way, yeah, you're safe scumming your way all the way through. And the next thing you know, you're at this castle in which your keys, there's more doors than there are, uh, you can't lock, unlock with your key as many doors as in the castle. Yep. So it was just so frustrating. So then you're like, what the hell? Let me load my save state. Why did I just randomly die? Oh, it's because your stamina went all the way down. Yep. Well, there's only one safe spot, so guess what? Start hey, over, here buddy. I start right the hell back over. And that pissed me off so damn bad to get that far into a game. Now, when I say somebody can beat it in two or three hours, probably a guy, a guy or girl that's played this game before and they like it. And they have it all mapped yes. out. They know everything about it. Like an hour in, I'm still finding find these damn dwarves and all this stuff. Uh, so here I am, like, three hours in for me and I'm like, Oh great. I got to restart this damn game again. And, and I'm like, I'm going to get one stone. That was my thing. It's like, I'm going to get one of these damn stones. Cause once I read through the damn, the, the walkthrough uh, and, and I needed that help. And that's one thing. The game is challenging. Like I say, it's more probably puzzle and knowledge than it is actual fighting somebody. But it was just so frustrating. It's like, this game is strange enough as it is going to be difficult to beat. And then it's going to let me screw myself with the save states. It's going to screw me by letting me kill somebody that I need. Uh, Hey, uh, even when you met these dwarves and you're like trying to find out what he wants to trade you. I didn't also like that. He wants a gold bar, which looks literally like a stick of butter where it looks like, uh, I can't tell if this is a coin or a stone. And, and so the whole time, it, it was just all very frustrating. So while I'm doing this, hey, guess what? I accidentally shoot the guy again and kill him. And it's just like, at any moment, I knew I had to start this game over. And I did not enjoy that. Now, for the people, that, like say, the Skyrim, the Dark Souls, them folks may like that. I did not. And that was my biggest turnoff on this game. I will. I, I could see with that. I, I I can agree with that too because I made it quite far into. I think I got like, I think I got three stones, and there was what five or something like that. There was four for four. each of the four brothers. That's right. So I I got three of them. I didn't beat it because I ran out of time. And, well, uh, and and once again, it's one thing when you feel the need of completion on it. Uh, to me, I did not feel that. I, I, I wasn't a fan of it, which, you know, I hate that we've played four games. I've not really been a fan of any of the games we've played, but, uh, I, I don't have the want or need to want to go back and play this game. I, I can tell you, I, I'm probably fine never playing this game again. I, I bought Roger Clemens baseball because I found it cheap enough. I will never buy Obidus unless it is literally two dollars at a junk store. Uh, <laughs> there, there is no, there's no point of me ever wanting to go back to this game. Yeah, I said I, I could complete it if I really wanted to. It's just like I said, you know. But do you want wife, to? kids, job? You know, I didn't, I couldn't put in the hour. I know your kids uh, typically help you play your games. Did they play this game? They did not review this game. They did not review this no. game. Well, it's probably a, a good thing. Uh, so for me, that's all I've got for the break it part of this, Josh. Is there anything that you want to add to it? No, I think that I think I think we covered it honestly because the only other breaking thing to it was was yeah, you could kill the NPCs if you didn't know what buttons you were hitting. So, and, and I, I said, I had, for me to get three stones, I will say this. I've restarted seven times to get three of the stones because I messed up somewhere or I died or I save scummed it in the worst spot possible. So I actually had to restart multiple times. And, and the, the only thing I can think is that's what the game wants you to do. 
which is not what I want to do. But but that's the way it's geared is uh, it's just way too easy to to kill or to do something wrong in this game. Like say when I got into the damn castle and I done saved my game and I struggled to get through the damn caves and to get there. Uh, next thing I know is bam, I'm dead. Yeah, and there ain't nothing I can do about it because I done saved it on the next screen because I was safe scumming it, and then I'm like, oh man, I gotta start over again. Yeah. And it's like, do I necessarily really want to do this? And yeah. it's like, once I get one stone, I'm done. I'm done and, with this game. And I, I I get why they got why they done that is because of the playability. They want you to be able to play this game. Like I said, the overall gameplay is what, like you said, three hours. Yeah, I think if you knew what you were doing, you could finish this. And from what I've seen, about two to three hours. Yeah, so to get a, a two that, days worth of gameplay out of it from renting it, you had to, they had to do something for it. And I think that's the reason why they designed it the way they did. Well, let me rephrase that. I think you could play this game in two to three hours if you had a walkthrough telling you how not to murder the people you don't need to murder and to tell you which doors in the castles you need to open. Now, if you came through with no walkthrough whatsoever and you played it, I don't even know how many hours. Exactly. For somebody and, like me and you to beat this game, I couldn't even fathom it. Uh, it would be way more than two or three hours oh yeah, for me. I, I'm looking at least ten. I feel like a game like Dragon View that's supposed to be eight to ten hours, I feel like I could finish that game because it's not going to allow me to screw myself, I don't think, as much to where I feel like I could finish that eight to ten hour game quicker than when I started this game that will allow you to screw yourself to where you have to start over. Uh, uh, yeah, I can see that. So, I guess that's going to wrap it up. Uh, to me, not a huge fan of the game. Uh, but, you know what we're going to come to, Josh? Let's, let's know about the prices. The price of Ovidus. Now, I will say that there doesn't look like there's a whole lot of them online, so some of the prices may be skewed. I feel like price charting in eBay was pretty close, except for the new in-box. I didn't find any new in-box ones on eBay that either had sold or was listed, so I didn't really have a baseline. So I'm going new in-box strictly off price charting. So for a loose copy of this game, Josh, just the cartridge, what do you think this thing, this game runs? Four or five dollars. Now, I will tell you, you're way low. Just because, what? Well, I'm not going to say way low. It's a Super Nintendo game. I think Roger Clemens was probably 5 or $6. It was, and that's why I'm basing it off of that. So, wow, okay, well, that's where you go. You're low on it. Would you like to take another guess on it? You're not. I ain't going to say you're way low, but you're low. Uh, eight to nine? Loose? Price charting has it at fifteen forty four as of today. That's pretty expensive. Now eBay has it for sixteen bucks. So to me, that's uh, that's fair. At the end of the day, if I said, "Hey, here's this game for fifteen dollars, Josh, or I'll give you five dollars cash," what are you gonna take? I'd probably take the game this go around. I would. Well, to me, I base it on our local junk store that sells all their games for two dollars. I'd pick this game up for two dollars and put it on the shelf. I, it's not enough. Now, if this game was a hundred dollars loose, I would turn around and flip it in a heartbeat and not have any problem with it. But I feel like it was probably properly rated at fifteen, sixteen dollars. Like I say, uh, price charting was at fifteen forty four. eBay was between fourteen and nineteen dollars on it loose. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I went with sixteen on the average. Uh, I would say that I could get $16 worth of value out of this game. Not that I'd want to, but if I had to, you probably got it there. So, this game complete in box. Looking good, mind you. A lot of the copies I've seen did look pretty crisp. What do you think this, this runs in box? Okay, if it was already 15 for loose, I'm thinking a solid, solid 90 to 110. You're high. Really? I, I'll tell you, out of the three games, uh, Roger Clemens may have been properly rated as a sports game. I feel like this game is, as far as complete in box and loose, is pretty much in spot. So I feel like if you wanted this game, it's a Super Nintendo game, uh, complete in box, price charting has it at $50 on the dot. I've seen several of them on eBay that sold for $60, roughly, in that range. Some a little bit, like I say, that's kind of the average. 
But if you were really a fan of this game, to have this in a pretty decent box with the instruction manual and all you spent was $50 on a Super Nintendo day, game in the day and age of 2022, that's not too unrealistic. Now, I think it's a crap game, but there's if also a crap game. Yes. Yeah, if you're a collector, that makes sense. If, if I was here and I could buy a lot of... Uh, if I could buy a Super Nintendo game, insert random game for $50, complete in the box, and it looks good, and it's not a sports game, and you tell me it's $50, I might be like, hey, I don't even know what need to know the name. I mean, that's pretty cheap yeah. for a game that yeah. isn't a sports game. Some sports games are more than that, too. So, I didn't see any new ones on eBay, but uh, price charting showed over like the last, I forget how many months it goes back, that one had sold where they were pulling from. So I have nothing for eBay. How much do you think a new copy of this sold? I'm going to go with a hundred. You're not too far off. They said that one had sold and it was $118 and 20 cents, which once again, for a sealed super Nintendo game, probably isn't the worst. No, price. That's not the worst. Uh, there, there I, I will say there's probably crappier games that you can buy for $15 or a hundred dollars complete in box, $120. Uh, there's worse places you could go. Now, if you're wanting to invest your money, if you said, hey, you know, drop $120 and then in 10 years are you going to get rich? No, nah, in 10 years, this game's probably like a $100 profit. Yeah. But uh, I, I thought that was a little strange. Like I was expecting, like say with this being uh, a little bit different type of game, I thought there was going to be more value to it. But I feel like it was probably properly rated as far as the value goes. Yeah, I... I I could see that. Like I said, for a collector, if you did collect these, I don't think that's too bad. Now, once again, this goes with a lot of the other items. I don't feel like if, with me, I'm never going to own a Super Nintendo set. I don't feel like I have to own this game unless I pick it up for such a deal. And with it being $15 on eBay, literally a couple bucks is all I would personally spend on it. So I guess uh, at the end of the day... I know how I feel about this game. I, I didn't think it was the greatest game I'd ever played. Wasn't a big fan of it. Uh, I'm taking it that you're not a huge fan of this game either, are you? I am not. So we're going to go to the Mount Rushmore rankings. We have got four. This is our fourth game. So just to bring back a little recap, I've got Dragon View as my number one game. Super Putty is my number two, and Roger Clemens is my number three game. And I got Super Putty as number one, Roger Clemens is two, and Dragon View is three. So, I'll just go ahead and tell you, to be honest, I ain't swaying your vote. I felt like Dragon View was a way, like, far and ahead better game than this. So, how do you, how do you feel? Is this... One, two, three, or four for you, Josh. This will be number four. I agree. I think Dragon View is better. I, like in Dragon View, the problems that we had with it, uh, or or at least for me, I'm not going to speak for you. I feel like Dragon View. When you say three and four, there's a huge gap between that three and four. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now, for me, I had Dragon View, Super Putty, Roger Clemens. I'm going to drop. Obitus into the number three spot. Okay, so you're moving down Roger Clemens. I really did not enjoy Roger Clemens, even though I know that's not the worst game. I feel like in, with Obitus, even though I didn't enjoy playing it by myself, if we were sitting here and we were playing it and we're just going to drink a 12-pack of beer or whatever, eat a bunch of crystals, drink beer, stay up all night, I feel like we could have fun while we did this. Play it by yourself. Probably not not as much, but I feel like there's a little bit of replayability out of this. I do think Super Putty, as far as the the, the previous Amiga game that we played, was uh, a lot better. For There was more bang for the buck, I guess. Uh, I guess part of the obitus is I probably enjoy how bad it sucks a little bit more than I do Roger Clemens. Roger Clemens was borderline unplayable. I didn't think obitus was as necessarily unplayable. I just think... I didn't know all the rules as I played the game. I felt I felt like they were making up some stuff on the fly. It, like you said, for you, it was the challenging of uh, if you mess up, you have to restart. Yes, and and I do have more background on probably the MS DOS games, playing some really crappy freeware and shareware games on that. 
But uh, I, I do think it was uh, above Roger Clemens, and I don't think it was necessarily close. Now, uh, I would still, uh, between Drag Dragon View and Super Putty, there's a huge gap for me. And then there's a monster gap between three and four. So, uh, once again, uh, Obitus to be on the Mount Rushmore uh, is only because we've played four games. Uh, I Agreed. Don't think, I don't think that uh, anybody would ever <clears throat> say that Super Putty, Roger Clemens, Dragon View, and Obitus is on their their top now, four list. Oh, right yeah, here. no. I, I feel like that when we draw our fifth game tonight, it's got to be better than the game. It's going to be. It, it's got to be. Hopefully. Hopefully. Well, Josh, I don't really have a whole lot more I want to add to this. Uh, I kind of agree where you, even though I don't agree where you put uh, Dragon View on your list, and you may not agree with where mine is. I do agree where you have Obitus uh, right there. Uh, I'm pretty much done with this game. I don't think I ever want to play it again. Uh, how do you feel about it? You got anything you want to add before we leave? No, I think I'm done with it as well. Hopefully, hopefully we get a better game. That's all I'm wanting. I, I will tell you, I guess there's probably a reason why I never heard of Obitus. And, uh, this is it. Uh, yeah. When you know, especially when you're talking about Super Nintendo RPGs, uh, I'm sure there's a few I've never heard of, but this has got to be in the bottom tier of those RPGs. For, so I, I don't really know what else to add. Now, the, the once again, if we were doing an MS-DOS review, it might be a little bit different, might be a little more cutting edge, but I think this game is just a little dated for when it came out. I agree with it. And like you said, it, it was an MS DOS and it got released in when? 91? 91. So, I mean, that's at the very early stages of the Super Nintendo. So, it, it was a port. It, it was ported over. So, all right. Well, well, that's most of them Amigo games. Like Super Putty is pretty much the same thing. So, uh, I guess for me, that's all I've got to add is uh, Obitus wasn't the worst, but it's still not good. I can see that and I will agree with it. Ah, right, well, this is George, and I'm signing off. This is Josh. See you later.